doing, but gradually I saw that it was very superficial and they were all <laughs> spaced out. You know, it was so much mixed with drugs. And at, then came that period of, you know, whole, the whole Indian religion, Kama Sutra, Tantra, Yoga, Hash, everything was all mixed up. And that was a difficult period for me because, you see, my guru was very old-fashioned and he taught me this music saying always that keep the integrity, keep the, you know, sanctity of our music. So, you know, I used to feel very unclean. Of course, throughout that time, you were still very great friends with a number of classical musicians of the West. Yehudi Menuhin exactly. was one. You've known That's for many years. That's the beauty years. of our music. It attracts all the different sectors. You know, jazz is another area. In fact, that was the first uh, area where uh, my music was a great success. All the jazz buffs, jazz musicians, you know, people like uh, John Coltrane, who became my student. Is that Many because of the of jazz musicians. Is that because in of the, the improvisation, the, the interest in right. improvisation? So that improvisation was the point which sort of many people thought is same like jazz, though it isn't. It is very superficially similar because jazz improvises on some chords and some, you know, harmony patterns. And they take up a theme and then they improvise. They do anything they want. But we improvise on ragas. We are more disciplined in it, you see. We have to keep the raga, sanctity of the raga and pattern of the raga. So it's more difficult, you see, in a way. But then, you see, I made wonderful friends with uh, Menuhin, who is such a great musician and a great human being. He has so much love for different sort of music, different uh, traditions, and uh, we did few records which became very uh, fact, successful. I composed specially based on Indian music, that Indian ragas and thalas. Of course, eventually you started writing not only for individual Western musicians, but for Western orchestras. Right. Now, how, how difficult is it? Because you don't have orchestras as, in the same way with Indian Natural. music, do you? Well, the thing is, is that uh, I never tried to do something which was not in my jurisdiction, in the sense I tried to keep the basis of ragas and thalas. And what I thought that the orchestra, the Western orchestra, has got such tremendous range uh, so many octaves you get, plus stone, colors, you know, the dynamics. I, I, I really try to use that much more and keep it as Indian as possible and not overdo with too much of harmony and counterpoint. Uh, and the result was to some very pleasing. I was quite satisfied with some, some of it. Of course, some are maybe not that interesting, but I found it completely satisfying because uh, of what I said, the range. It was more of an extension to my sitar. I know one of your more recent efforts in, in that way was um, doing the music for the Gandhi film and where you were nominated for an Academy Award. It, it worked so well. I could have done much more for that film, really, I'm sorry to say, but uh, whatever has been heard has been very much appreciated. I'm glad to see that. But there you were working uh, with George Fenton, weren't you? The two of you were working together to try and combine the Western and the Indian feeling. Well, How that's what that? it <laughs> seemed like, but that was not the point that I started with, you know. I really wanted to uh, bring more spirit of Gandhi and the simplicity in his life, you know. And uh, as I said, the net result it seems to be very good and people love it. But uh, there, there were many places where I felt there would have, should have been music of different sort or different type. But it's a matter of, you know, opinion, of course.
interesting as an Indian musician with the, the long, long tradition of Indian classical music behind you. You have had to adapt so much in this last generation to the modern world, not only to traveling to the West, but um, the fact that you are actually putting music to films and have been doing so for years. I have been wrongly interpreted because I play two different roles, one as a performer, where I'm very orthodox, where I'm very traditional, you know, whatever I have learned from Baba and plus my own uh, thing in it, to it. But the foundation is really very deeply traditional. But the other role is like a composer. There I'm not frightened to experiment, you see, whether it's opera, ballet, orchestra or anything. I have tried hands with jazz, with electronic music. My last record is all completely with emulator which is, you know, the latest thing. It is step forward than uh, the synthesizer, where you feed each sound, and then you can do whatever you want with it on the keyboard. And uh, I feel very happy to have worked in this, and it has turned out to be very interesting. Mm -hmm. Of course, I haven't found anyone to bring it out yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I have tried everything uh, as a composer because from my childhood I have been very much interested in doing new things, experimenting. How do you see your future developing? Are you going to become more of a teacher? I know you have been doing teaching for many years, but is this going to become more important, do you think, in, in future years? Well, I like to spend really much more time in India and do a lot of creative things. Uh, I visualize, I have already started working on uh, different ballets or musical, I like to call them musical because it's a multimedia thing, you see, not just ballet, not just opera, or, but take up uh, mythological subjects and show them in, uh, with all the multimedia uh, help, but basically Indian. This is what I'm going to work on as much as I can apart from teaching these few students that I said. And how do you feel now about the fact that millions of young people look up to you? To, to me? Yes. They see you as their huh? guru and their guide. In oh, a way. oh, I see. Well, I see that among the young people nowadays, uh, it is more genuine. As I said, in the 60s and 70s, it was more artificial, you know, it was more of an escape. But now I think they are, like in the music, same way, in the spiritual path also, they seem to be a little more serious. But on the other hand, I personally feel that a young person should spend more time as one of our great saints Vivekananda used to say, he used to get very angry when he saw young people trying to meditate and do home and all that. He said, go and play football, go and work, do exercise, do, do some active work, karma yoga, you know. Through work you'll find work. And when the time will come, then you start meditating. So I do believe that, you know. I still feel that it could be uh, just an escapism if one leaves everything and starts meditating. That's not for everyone, excepting some of the freaks, I would call them freaks, who are really from, like Buddha was, like Ramakrishna was, that from very childhood they had a special, like Satya Sai Baba is, you know. But for average people, I think young people don't, A, don't need drugs, because youth is the biggest, greatest stimulant, I think. Maybe elderly people need little tranquilizers or <laughs> little help to sleep or, you know, to relax. But young people have the built-in stimulant in, in them. They don't really need drugs or sit down to meditate that much, mm -hmm. but really study and play, do something solid, practice. Yes, you haven't needed anything like that because your sitar has been no, I never the, the spirit of your life, hasn't it? good. <laughs> I never needed any uh, stimulus. I have l loved beauty, I have loved women, I have loved anything beautiful, but uh, those have been inspirations to me, but uh, definitely not drugs or drinks. So, looking back over your life, what do you think within yourself has been your greatest achievement? Well, I've gone through so many different periods, you know, 
I have experienced life at its fullest. All the pleasures, all the pains. And now I have come to realize that uh, I have to be more introvert, you know, and bring out whatever I can do as a creative person. I cannot just close the door and sit in a room. As long as I have this creative urge, I'll try to, you know, bring out as much as I can through whatever inner disciplines or meditation or guidance from people that I love and respect. You'll speak to the world through your sitar. And through my sitar. Ravi Shankar, thank you very much. Thank you.